One of my patrons wanted to know how to make this kind of plastic packaging. He told me that he intends to use this for e-commerce product visualization, and this is probably one of the easiest and best ways to make money with Blender. I'm gonna show you how to make this type of packaging first, and afterwards we're gonna talk about how you can make money doing this type of shit, okay? In this particular situation, I'm going to start with a plane which I'm going to rotate sideways. I'm going to make that plane a little bit taller than it is wide. Then I'll just add a loop cut down here, inset these two faces with eye like this. This is going to give us this edge that goes around the packaging, and we're going to delete all this shit at the bottom. The because at the bottom we want to have a round sort of bend we don't want to have the same kind of frame for this at the bottom now we're going to inset this again but after we inset it we're going to uncheck boundary here you can also use the shortcut b to control that while you're still insetting it right then just pull this out a little bit to give it some thickness i want to use a mirror modifier on the x-axis so i get the same shit on the other side and now let's just add a couple of loop cuts so that our geometry is consisting of mostly squares and after we do that we're going to add a subdivision surface modifier you might want an extra edge loop over here and you want to pull that close to the edge here. And then we're just going to push this whole thing a little bit outwards on the x-axis so we get a tiny little gap between the two reflections. Now select the outline but not this lower part. Extrude, right click and with the 3D cursor placed at the origin or in the middle here, set the 3D cursor to the pivot point and scale to zero on the x-axis. Now let's go to object, shade smooth, add a couple more levels of subdivision. And we're going to select these corner edges here, add a mean crease to that. Set the mean crease value to 1, and now we're going to have to move some of this geometry downwards a little bit. Take some of these edge loops and scale them down a little bit, and you might want to use your proportional editing for this. And that way, when you scale this down, it's also going to pull some of the geometry around it. Now we can just apply the mirror modifier, merge any vertices by distance, then select the lower edge loop, deselect the edges on the sides here, and then go to W, bridge edge loops, and we're gonna have to get rid of this edge over here and again merge vertices by distance. Now you can see that we're starting to get a rough shape of this thing. Now this is going to be different in every situation but the main idea is this. You kind of want to fuck up the geometry a little bit. You kind of just want to mess things up a little bit, all right? So for example, I can pull these faces down a little bit to make this part more round, but then I'll take this edge and with double G, I'll just slide it upwards a little bit. That's going to give me this kind of curved part at the bottom. I can also do that with another vertex over here. And a cool way that you can make this a little bit easier sometimes is you can activate your proportional editing, set the fall off to random, and now when you select a vertex and you move shit around, everything within this circle is going to be randomly selected and moved around along with the vertex. So you can just move it slightly to kind of give it a more beat up look. But the most important part of this video are these folds over here. So here's how you make those. You're going to select another face on the other side. So now we have this whole segment on the side selected. We're going to inset that with I. Make sure to toggle edge rail a couple of times to see what gives you a better result. Then inset this again and scale it down on the x-axis to pull this geometry inwards a little bit more. Now again, you have to slide some of this shit around to roughly control the shape. Remember, we still don't have much geometry, so we can't control this shape in too much detail. But we're just roughly kind of defining how large we want this dent to be first. We can also move these edges a little bit further inwards like this. And then once we apply one level of subdivision, we get some extra edge loops like this. So we're going to again add a new subdivision surface modifier. Don't apply this one yet. And take an edge loop like this and with double G you can slide it outwards towards the end. And this is going to make this fold look a little bit sharper, kind of like it does over here. Now you can do something similar with the surrounding geometry. For example, we can bring these edges closer, use Alt S to push them inwards a little bit. Take some vertices like this. And with smooth proportional editing, maybe you can bring these vertices a little bit upwards to kind of mess up the shape a little bit further. And now you probably also want to push this shit inwards a little bit like this. We're going to do the same shit over here at the bottom. So we just inset a couple of faces. We're going to take that area which we inset and we're going to inset it again. Scale it down on the x-axis. Then just add an extra loop cut again. Just make sure that the curves here don't look too sharp and too unnatural. Just try to randomly move some shit around and if it doesn't work out you can always just undo it. And of course you're going to want to alt right click this edge around here and set the mean crease on that to something like 1. Maybe mark sharp and an object data property shade auto smooth all the way up. And now this edge here is going to look a bit more sharp. And it would be a good idea to add some extra loop cuts like this on the sides. Bevel those two loop cuts. And we're going to extrude them, right click and use Alt S to just push them out slightly, but only slightly. So after you spend some time doing this type of shit, you're going to have plenty of folds and plenty of curves and bends in your little plastic packaging. And obviously the more time you invest in this, the better it's going to look. So it's up to you how necessary it is to make this look completely fucking realistic. Maybe you just need it to look reasonably good so you can at least tell what this fucking object is. Now you can take your little bottle of steroids and you can package it in there. So the pharmaceutical companies can now convince people that they're sick and they need to buy this medicine to feel right instead of just telling them to exercise and eat a little bit better to prevent themselves from getting a fucking heart attack but we're just trying to make some money so this is going to be good enough for us 
So here's how you can make money doing this type of shit, okay? If you go to Amazon or any fucking e-commerce website on earth, there's a bunch of pictures of different things. Here's an example of a random product. Hopefully I won't get sued by this person for talking about their fucking brand. So every single product which is being sold online, and by the way, it's being sold for a whole shitload of money. These people are making a bunch of money selling this stuff, all right? Every single one of these products has a bunch of pictures that show you what the product is, all right? If the customers and people who want to buy this shit, if they wouldn't see the pictures of this, they probably wouldn't even buy it. Imagine if I'm trying to buy a television stand, but I don't have good pictures over here showing me how it works and what it's going to look like on my wall. There's no fucking chance I'm going to buy. I want to see what I'm getting first. So the point is that the companies who are selling this, it's really important for them to show their customers what exactly they're selling in a really good way. So not only do they have to show what the product actually is, but they also have to present it in a nice way so you can picture yourself as this guy sitting over here watching football and that makes you buy the product. So since this is so important to the people who are selling this stuff online, they are willing to pay money to make sure that they have the good pictures, okay? And they don't always use a photographer, okay? In fact, it might even be cheaper and better to use a 3D artist instead of a photographer for this shit. So the way that you can make money here as a 3D artist is you find companies who sell products online or just individuals who sell products online and you contact them and I'm literally talking about you can visit this company's website and just send them an email somewhere at the bottom of their fucking website. Or it's even better if you know somebody who works in that company as a friend or something like that. And all you have to do is ask that person, hey, I'm a 3D artist. Do you need some help visualizing your products? Here are some examples of what I do. Obviously, it's up to you how you phrase this shit. And obviously, you're going to have to reach out to a bunch of people before anybody even responds to you. But this is how you can make money as a 3D artist. Now, don't come at me a year later telling me, Ari and I couldn't make any money as a 3D artist. This was shit advice. Because chance Chances are you probably sent two fucking messages and you just gave up. That's not my problem. I'm just telling you what you have to do, all right? The same way if you ask me for gym advice, I'm going to tell you how to work out, but that doesn't mean you're going to get jacked if you just worked out for one fucking evening, right? Find a bunch of companies, find people who are selling this type of shit, reach out to them, make sure that you have decent shit in your portfolio. They don't want to see a portfolio that looks like dog shit, okay? They don't want to work with you if you're going to make their products look worse. So it's not that hard to just model something like this and render it in a cute way, put it on an art station, and literally just create some of this random shit in 3D and put it in your portfolio. I can take it just a couple of days. And next thing, you know you get some emails respond to you and they want to work with you and they're going to give you some money in exchange for pictures of this stuff here's a perfect example of a 3d fucking model of a television mount so now you know how to make money with blender join my discord and show us if you're going to try to actually pursue this and talk to us about your progress because a lot of people want to do this too they just don't have the balls to actually try to consistently reach out to people let me know in the comments what you want to see next subscribe to the fucking channel and i'll see you guys in the next one